Hi folks, I want to talk about this article that was just breaking on Daily Express today about an asteroid that's going to fly by Earth on Friday and it's rather sensationalistic and it's kind of going viral very quickly from what I can tell uh, with other people and sources picking it up and sort of the alternative online media uh, some other YouTube pages picking up on it and making headlines that are even more sensationalist and frankly wrong this one claims that the asteroid might actually hit Earth on Friday and basically it's a word-for-word -word copy of Nathan's article uh, it just reads it off with one of these text reader programs uh, but makes an even more extreme claim in terms of the headline uh, but in truth there, it isn't a risk of impact on Friday it is a near-earth asteroid and it is a potentially hazardous asteroid but that criteria is simply defined based on uh, how close the orbit gets to Earth's orbit and things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's actually any risk of impact even in, in our lifetimes at all. Um, and that's the case here. It does get relatively close to Earth on Friday, but it's not even particularly noteworthy, to be honest. There are other asteroids uh, that are probably a little bit larger and are going to come a little bit closer than this one this year that we already know about. So it's not really particularly noteworthy, but for whatever reason, this author has picked up on it and decided to write this uh, rather ridiculous fear-mongering article about it, and now it's going viral. So I've performed my own solution of the orbit based on just amateur data alone, so all professional data is excluded. This is just amateur data. The professional data is included here for comparison. Uh, you can see the residuals in parentheses. These are stations that were excluded from the calculations but you can see what the residuals are compared to the amateur orbit. So you can see it's a very tight fit to the amateur data. It agrees with it extremely well. Uh, but those stations were excluded. The ones that you see, the residuals you see that do not have parentheses around them, were actually used for calculation. So those are amateur observatories, like Wishing Star Observatory, he's an amateur observer. Uh, let's see, C-47, that's a non-dwarf, he's an amateur observer in Germany. So those guys were used for calculating the orbit. Professional observers were excluded, but are shown here for comparison, so you can see how, how well their data agrees with the amateur data. Uh, and this is the nominal solution to the orbit. Now, I've imported this into ORSA for analysis, but also in, uh, performed a series of Monte Carlo solutions, which I also imported into ORSA. So we can actually see the uncertainty region based on just the amateur data. And we can see if the uncertainty region overlaps with Earth. In other words, is there any risk for impact on Friday? Uh, so let's take a look at what ORSA shows. So here it is. Here's, uh, here are the Monte Carlo solutions. They form a very, very tight uncertainty region, which you can see here. Uh, the uncertainty region is uh, just a series of small blue dots. They're very, very hard to see, but they're right where my mouse cursor is right here. The green labels show um, the labels of each of those dots, and as you can see, they're all bunched up together. Uh, and as you can see, the Moon and Earth are way over here, so it doesn't even get all that close to Earth. Uh, now this starts at midnight on March 27th on Friday. I'll play it here. Actually, I'll just fast forward through through the end of the day. You can see it actually, the distance doesn't change all that much over the course of the day, but this is the date of closest approach. If I pull up a, a graph of the distance, you can see here's the nominal orbital solution, and you can see where close approach occurs on that day and then the distance starts to increase again uh, and so the close approach on that day works out to about 4.47 million kilometers which is about 11.6 LD so it's not particularly close and once again the uncertainty region is very tight even just based on amateur data uh, not even including uh, not even including professional data we can already tell that it is no risk for impact at all, not even close. So, we have a very good idea of where this asteroid is going to be on Friday. It's not a risk for impact. And, as I said, it's not even a particularly close approach. Um, at, 11, at 11 LD, there are plenty of asteroids that are going to be coming closer than that to, to us this year. Uh, and even in terms of asteroids in this size class, there are better opportunities, essentially. So, here's an example. 2011 UW-158 uh, will be coming uh, within about 6.4 LD on uh, July 19th this year. Uh, let's see. Here's another one, 1998 WT-24. The absolute magnitude of this 
asteroid is a good bit brighter, about a full magnitude brighter, uh, than YB35. And it will be getting to within about uh, 10.9 LD, so a little bit closer uh, than this asteroid. So this, this asteroid is not even all that noteworthy, but for some strange reason, uh, this particular author has decided to pick up on this one and write this crazy article about it. I can't imagine he'll be doing the same for each of these. I mean, eventually, after you cry wolf so many times, people are going to stop listening to you. So, for whatever reason, he's picked up on this one. We'll see if he picks up on the next one. I doubt it. Uh, but there it is. So I'll include a link to the uh, orbital solution in the video description, and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, but that's all there is to it. It's not a risk for impact at all. Uh, thanks for watching. Clear skies and have a nice day.